day of multi-billion dollar announcements, the Prime Minister said that the federal government will earmark $2 billion to buy ventilators, test kits, and other key medical equipment. But he said the government has already spoken to 3,000 businesses to find out how they can help, but there are already shortages. How fast can these get to the front lines? Why is it taken so long? Talk about that and the other critical measures, like helping people who need to pay rent tomorrow. We're joined by the industry minister, Navdeep Baines. Mr. Baines, good to have you back on the program, and I hope you and your family are well. i got to start with the medical equipment, because the prime minister talked about that. Can you tell Canadians how many ventilators and how many test kits the government has procured and when they get, not just to the front lines in urban centres, but distributed equitably across the country? So as you recall from our last conversation, you were asking specifically how many ventilators have we purchased. Today, my colleague, Minister Anand, announced 1,570 ventilators have been purchased, with another 4,000 coming. We added that we're focusing on testing as well. We've engaged with Spartan, who had a now purchase order for over 1 million rapid test kits. And to complement that, we recognize the importance of masks, surgical masks, an N95 mask as well. 157 million surgical masks are on their way, as well as 16 million N95 masks. Okay, I, we're having a little audio, but that's okay. I'll just repeat. 1,570 ventilators from companies in Canada, Europe, and the U.S., and 4,000 if needed. Can you tell us, do you really expect, uh, you know, companies in the United States, which has a massive shortage, to be sending ventilators to Canada, or are these going to be Canadian-made Canadian sourced. These are Canadian made ventilators. Thornhill Medical is an example of that, that are produced for Canadians to protect Canadian frontline workers. We recognize that we can't exclusively, exclusively rely on global supply chains. They're a bit unstable these days. And it's important that we develop domestic capacity. And that's exactly what we're doing. Minister Baines, you heard Francois Legault. There are real shortages. I've talked talk to doctors and medical personnel who said they're already rationing things like, uh, you know, gloves and gowns. Um, it seems like there's some kind of disconnect. The federal government assures us there's no shortages and we've got supply chain coming, and the front lines are saying we're experiencing shortages now. Can you just clarify, are there shortages right now that you guys are fighting to shore up? Based on the feedback that uh, my colleagues are getting from the provinces and territories, right now we're in a position where they have sufficient supplies. That situation can change in the coming days and weeks, and that's why we really wrapped up our bulk buying. The Prime Minister announced a $2 billion bulk buying initiative today through procurement, and also retooling Canadian companies so they can scale up and produce the necessary equipment that we need right here in Canada for frontline healthcare workers. Yeah, talk about that. The industrial policy has essentially been retooled for that. Can you give us a, a firm, a, a, an example of how that's worked? And again, I know I'm pressing you on the dates because time matters. When will those ventilators, test kits, and masks actually get to the front lines? An example of a company that scaled up significantly is Medicom in Montreal. It's used a strategic innovation fund that we made available. This is an industrial policy program that we have in place to help Canadian companies scale up. And this will enable them now to produce, like I said, 60 million masks, a combination of surgical masks and N95 masks. And we'll be receiving those masks in a matter of days. Okay, and the ventilators? So the ventilators, again, we had 1,570 ventilators that we ordered. Thornhill Medical is producing them on a weekly basis. And to your earlier point, we're going to identify the unique needs right across the country to coordinate with the provinces and territories based on the needs, able to provide these right. additional resources. Uh, Minister, just the last thing on masks. We've heard of a lot of mixed messages on whether citizens should be wearing masks. But frankly, I'm confused. Are we saying that because we have a shortage of masks and we're trying to preserve them for the frontline workers, or they actually don't help stop, they don't really do anything to stop the spread of COVID-19? The best way to stop uh, the spread of COVID-19 is stay home. Don't leave, don't travel, self-isolate, keep physical distancing, deal with those measures, and that's the best way to flatten the curve. 
And I have a lot of faith and confidence in my colleague, Patty Haidu, and Dr. Tam and the advice they're giving Canadians. Although some people have to go out for groceries. Rent is due tomorrow for millions of Canadians. They don't have a government policy on that yet. Landlords are worried they won't get paid. Tenants are worried they're going to get tossed. Will the federal government backstop people who can't pay rent? So my understanding is a lot of jurisdictions have moved on this. Provinces have understood the importance of this. They're complementing the initiatives we put in place to provide more cash to individuals and businesses uh, for the coming weeks and months. And that's the game plan. This is not about landlords taking advantage of tenants. This is about everyone working together to address these concerns. And there's a lot of goodwill out there, Evan. Yeah, but, but, sir, to be candid, a lot of people don't think that goodwill is what they can rely on to keep a roof over their head. They want a policy that if they don't pay for two months, cause, because, frankly, they can't get access to the federal government's aid package for weeks and weeks. Will your government backstop both landlords and tenants who are renting if they can't make their payment? We stepped up in a big way when it comes to direct support for individuals that are losing jobs. We put in place a significant wage subsidy up to 75%. We provided loans. We'll continue to work with the provinces to see what additional needs that they have to support Canadians. We've taken extraordinary steps in these very difficult times. And I can assure you, Evan, the steps that we've taken are just the beginning. We'll take more steps to protect Canadians. And again, I agree. I it's easy to be a, a Monday morning quarterback on this stuff, but look, time matters. Rent is due tomorrow. The aid package has been delayed. Even today, it was delayed yet another day. Again, I got to press you one more time. That doesn't help the folks that got to pay rent tomorrow. What is your message to them? Point of clarification, nothing is being delayed. We're going to provide further clarity around the wage subsidy, but it's retroactive to March 15th, uh, Evan, and with regards to... Uh, people getting uh, access to that $2,000 per month cash for the Canada Emergency Response benefit, they can go to the Canadian Revenue Agency to quickly uh, set up their account so we can provide a direct deposit. We're looking at all the tools we have within the current framework to provide that money quickly to Canadians and Canadian businesses. Do you know if this applies to restaurants, bars, companies? Do you know how wide the criteria for, for this, the aid package will be, sir? So I've spoken with Michael Denham, for example, at Business Development Bank of Canada, and he's assured me that the eligibility criteria will be loosened, uh, will expand fairly significantly to assist businesses in the past that have not received support through some of our programming will now be eligible. I got to ask you the last question because you're the industry minister. Uh, banks. Uh, banks are going to defer some mortgages for six months, but not for people who own a property where it's not their primary residence. Others want banks to cap interest rates for the, the, the whatever the length of time of this crisis. Others want your government to put caps on payday loans so low-income Canadians don't get gouged at this time. Are any of those on the table? So we're in constant contact with the banks to see what we can do to... Yeah. Now the table. So we can have a at the end of it. All right, uh, we lost you a bit there. Uh, Minister Baines, i got to let you go. We're having a bit of audio trouble. We hope there's going to be more details from uh, Ms. Minister Morneau tomorrow. Thank you, Minister Baines. I always appreciate you joining us on the program. Take good care, sir. Thank you very much for having me.